The games at Birmingham City and Bristol City fell victim to the weather today, but we're not short on action as we head into the final round of the Barclays Women's Super League before the Christmas break. Table toppers Arsenal travel to Everton. Win this Liverpool take on High Flyers Chelsea. And Manchester City face Brighton at home. And we're here at the Academy Stadium where we'll be joined later in the show by Manchester City boss Nick Cushing to dissect all of the day's action. But before then, let's see how his side got on against Brighton as they look to bounce back from that disappointing defeat against Chelsea. Oh, what a brilliant finish. Roebuck is finally beaten. And it's the woman in form, Beth England, who levels things up here. Robert got a touch and England's there again and it's turned in. What a turnaround here from Chelsea. Commentary comes from former England captain Faye White and Vicky Sparks. So title chasing Manchester City looking to bounce back from their defeat to rivals Chelsea as they take on Brighton and Hove Albion in the Women's Super League at the Academy Stadium in Manchester. Two changes for Manchester City from their defeat to rivals Chelsea. Georgia Stanway is recalled in place of Tessa Vullett and Megan Campbell comes in for Demi Stokes at left back. 19-year-old Lauren Hemp signed a new deal this week and will be looking to impress again. Three changes for Brighton from their last league match, the defeat by Tottenham, and a big one in goal. Sophie Harris makes her first league start of the season. In for regular Megan Walsh, who is on the bench. Matilda Lundorf and Emily Simpkins also come in for Barton and Nat Keel. Victoria Williams clears away. Picked up by Manchester City, though. The run made by Becky, early shot, well saved and gathered at the second attempt by Sophie Harris. I think she's actually given it as a pass back to the keeper and she picked it up. An early error from Brighton and an early opportunity for Manchester City. Saw in the World Cup she went low to the bottom right. We did and it is Horton and it's straight into the net and that is the perfect start for Manchester City. They lead Brighton by a goal to nil, and it's the captain, Steph Horton. Manchester City just forced backwards, and that's the sort of defending that Hope Powell, the Brighton boss, will want to see. It might have to be last ditch at times, but if you get your body in the way, we'll be able to stop Manchester City. Not if you give them space like this, though. Becky's effort in, and that is a wonderful, wonderful goal by Ellen White. Yeah, and again, if you don't want it to, to land to anyone in the box, it would be Ellen White. She's shown in the World Cup an unbelievable finish in there, and it's carrying on in, into this campaign. Manchester City sweeping forward again, though. Brighton have switched off. Here is Ellen White, well saved by Sophie Harris. Excellent save on her first league start of the season. Keeps it at 2-0 to Manchester City. She looked as though she was perhaps limping a little bit before latching onto that chance, White. She suddenly got there OK as Stanway sends it in high, headed back across and headed in. And there is the third for Manchester City. And here is Steph Halton who gets up at the back and Hemp just drifts in there, but she's in the right place at the right time to just nod that one in. It's half a shout for handball as Victoria Williams tried to send that further into the area. Whelan's effort was dropped by Roebuck and the goal is given. No, she hasn't given it. Brighton were on the edge of celebrating and the goal disallowed. Yeah, I mean, as I, my first impression was that she, oh, she had it in her hands as the challenge come in. So I was feeling surprised that she was going to give it. Lucy Oliver says it's a push. Manchester City can't win it back and the shot is driven in and not too far away at all. Not a bad effort. Yeah, quite far out, but certainly fancies a chance. She had that look, didn't she, just before she, she struck it and 
certainly seen her in this game. She has got a good pa passing range ability and, and obviously for that strike too. Weir, now Walsh. Weir's continued to run. This is very well worked by Manchester City and very well saved by Sophie Harris. Yeah, amazing move from City. It comes from all the way from the back, but it's just this pass here from Walsh. I just went, oh, she did it, because it was weighted perfectly for a very tight area. Um, but brilliant again by Harris. You know, she's not let that first goal really affect her. Manchester City preparing to bring Pauline Bremer on. This could be a fourth here for Georgia Stanway, and it will be. Manchester City make it four against Brighton. And they are responding to that defeat by Chelsea in style. And just the speed and positioning of Stanway gets off of uh, Williams' shoulder, who looks tired now in this second half, can't really chase back. And just the composure to just nudge it past Harris and easily slots it in. Manchester City just patiently now seeing this one out. Happy to work another opportunity if they can. Delivery again. Lovely finish. And they can. They can work another one. Pauline Bremer off the bench. She just gets in front of the defender, uses her body and just thighs it. Just in, loops it in over Harris in goal. So full time at the Academy Stadium in Manchester. Manchester City 5, Brighton and Hove Albion nil. I think obviously once you uh, get beat, it's important that you come back with a win. And we started off really good and uh, we put the game to bed quite early and uh, overall happy to end 2019 with a win. 5-0 is a little bit harsh, but, you, you know, you've got to learn some lessons from it. They keep the ball better than we do. You've got the ball, you've got half a chance. A comfortable win then for Manchester City here at the Academy Stadium. I'm delighted to say I'm now joined by the player of the match, Lauren Hemp, and manager Nick Cushing to analyse that one. Lauren, firstly, congratulations. Was that the perfect way for you and the team to bounce back from the disappointment of last weekend? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we were gutted with last week's result. I mean, this week we've tried to improve, tried to work on the things that we didn't do so well against Chelsea and bounced back from the performance. And I think we showed that in the performance and the goals today. Nick, five different goal scorers, which I know will please you, but of course it was Steph Horton that opened the scoring, but I think it's fair to say in quite controversial circumstances. What was your take on that de decision? Uh, in the game, in the moment, I thought it was a back pass. I thought it come off the keeper and she, she passed it back. Um, when I've looked at it, it's, it's a bit unfortunate. It, it's, it's, she's standing like one metre away. It comes, it's ricocheted off her, off her shin and gone back to the keeper. And naturally, the keeper's going to pick it up. Um, so I think Hope can feel a little bit... Yeah, a little bit disappointed in that result. But to get the goal early, settled us down, and we knew it was going to be difficult um, to go 1-0 up so early, and then 2-0, really, we, got, we took control of the game then. Let's talk about that second goal as well, because it was a fantastic finish from Ellen. But as well, this seemed like it was just something you were doing throughout the game, really exposing the width that Brighton allowed you. Yeah, um, they, they did defend a lot higher than I thought they would. We, we planned and prepared for them to sit in and put 11 behind the ball and play on the counter-attack from games like Arsenal and Chelsea that we've watched. Um, so we knew they were going to be centrally compact, they were going to try and control the spaces, and we knew the width of the pitch with Lauren Hemp and with Janine Becky was going to be really important for us, and it was pleasing to see that we consistently put them under pressure and, and created chances from those moments. Lauren, we've also just seen your goal there, the third of the afternoon, the perfect way really to cap off a really good week for you <coughs> signing a new contract. Yeah, obviously it was well, an easy decision for me, I think, and this week has been big for me and obviously starting again and getting a good result and creating chances for the team and managed to score a goal as well. And I'm just hoping to look to do that for the rest of the season and throughout the years that I'm still here. Nick, Lauren has just said there that it was an easy decision for her. I imagine it was a really easy decision from your part as well. Yeah, um, we knew before we brought her here that, we, that she, we, she would be a big player for us and you know she's coming up to the end of her contract we definitely wanted to secure her for the future she's got huge potential she's in the team because she's such a threat when we've got the ball um, she creates so many chances if you look at how many corners she wins for us which puts the opposition under pressure um, and there's so much more to come from her she's a young player she wants to learn she works incredibly hard and yeah we're just really pleased to have her in our squad for the future What's Nick like as a manager? Because we noticed today that even at 3-0, he wasn't letting those levels drop. He asked a lot of you and the girls, but that's probably what you want as a young player. Yeah, I mean, Nick pushes us all and he wants us to keep improving week on and obviously to get the results that we want because 
this year it could all come down to goal difference and it's the amount of goals that we score and we want to keep pushing for that and he definitely helps me improve, knows that I can get better and tries to get the best out of me. All very positive here today, Nick. And 2019 as a whole for Manchester City, very positive once again. It was the final game of the year today. How do you reflect back on it? Um, yeah, really pleased with last season to add two trophies. Um, we felt we could have pushed Arsenal a little, a little bit harder. You know, when we reflect on the draw against Bristol here, the draw against Bristol away, and the draw against Reading here. You know, especially the Reading and Chelsea games here, we were ahead, <coughs> one nil and, and two nil. Um, but please, when you add trophies, it, it always feels like it's been a successful year. Um, this year, disappointed to have lost to Chelsea and Arsenal away, but we know that can happen. We've won and lost those games, and they've won and lost them against us. We know exactly what we've got to do now. It's really clear for us we have to win here against Chelsea and against Arsenal, and we have to make sure that we don't drop any points in and around those games. So today, to add 5-0, you know, three points, put the pressure on everybody else to make sure they win, was really important for us. Well, thank you so much to both of you. Lauren, thank you so much. Off to the Christmas market tonight. I hope you enjoy that. The perfect way to celebrate. Nick, you are remaining with us for the rest of the show. And we pick up now by seeing how Arsenal got on. They faced Everton off the back of five straight wins and at the summit of the WSL table. Willie Kirk's side were tasked with stopping a free-flowing Gunners attack, including their midfield maestro, Kim Little. It's dropped here to Little. Danger! Goal! Little, Nobs, here's Kim Little! Oh, how about that? Commentary comes from Matt Davis-Adams. Well, this could well be the final game for the Toffees at Hague Avenue as they're aiming to move to a new home next year. They'll want to go out with a bang, but that will be far from straightforward against the table-topping Gunners who are scoring for fun. And the donk. Another good ball in. Clearance wasn't great. Straight to Miedemar. A couple of deflections on that. And eventually, gratefully grabbed by Tina Corpella. Here's Little. Lots of Everton bodies back defending. Can she pick out a yellow shirt? It's Miedemar! And Vivian Miedemar scores again. Mead. Clever reverse ball from Mead. Real chance for a second here. Good save, Corpella. To deny Danny van der Donk. Oh, Mead felt that. George, it was with the challenge immediately over to offer an apology. It's not going to stop her from getting a yellow card, though. Good ovation by the supporters inside the stadium. And let's hope she's back with us sooner rather than later. Substitution for Arsenal. Opportunity Arsenal then for the Leonie Meyer. Number 23, Beth Mead. Rod moving it on. And fired in and turned away by Corpella. Now then, little nudge on Little there, and it's a penalty. Arsenal with the perfect chance to double their lead. Chloe Kelly shoved Kim Little. It was a needless challenge to make, really. And Little sends Corpella the wrong way. And Arsenal will have some daylight between themselves and Everton now. Evans down the line for Maya. Myers cross, goalkeeper lost it, and Miedemar says thank you very much. Goal scorer for Arsenal, and that surely number 11, is Vivian game over Maidemar. now. Williamson, oh, she's made a mistake there, chance for Kelly to sweep one in. <laughs> and get Everton on the score sheet. Is it a consolation or is it the start of a revival? We'll find out soon enough.
There is the final whistle. Arsenal make sure that they finish 2019 on top of the Barclays we'll FA Women's the Super League. Stadium on the 18th of January for Everton versus Reading. Kick off for that. We tried to fight, fight ourselves our foot our way back into the game and we got a goal back and, and there was a couple of little moments that could have made it an interesting final five, ten minutes. But, uh, you know, I think I think take the game away from it and and I think we're, we're happy with where we are in terms of development over the last six months. Positive overall, just pleased for the girls. They're, they're tired, fatigued, so it's good they've earned their rest and have a little break and spend time with their families and then hopefully come back refreshed and carry on. A sixth straight win in the WSL then for Arsenal. But Nick, that one came at a real price for the Gunners with Beth Mead going down with a really nasty looking injury there. Yeah, it, it didn't look great. She, she was down for, for quite a while and then you can see her, you know, it, it, she's a big player for Arsenal. So I think, you know, with her missing, I, I think it could impact on their squad. I think, you know, it, it looks like they're coming together on the video. You can see her there with a the boot on and, and so it's obviously foot or ankle. Um, they'll be hoping that it's not too serious. Yeah, the message from Arsenal at full time was that it was too early for a prognosis, but we do, of course, wish her all the very best and hope to see her back on the pitch soon. Looking at the positives, though, for Arsenal, as I said, they did manage to get the win. Kim Little once again in brilliant form and Vivian Miedemar, two more goals for her. Yeah, I think you, you can see that their offensive strength with Kim Little, Jordan Nobbs, you know, Miedemar, if you give Miedemar chances, Especially in the 18-yard box, she's going to score. You know, she consistently shows that when she gets chances, when she gets chances in and around the goal, she, she, she's going to score. And you know, if you give Arsenal penalties, it's so difficult to play against Arsenal with their firepower. And if you give them penalties, you know, it's going to be really difficult to get a result against them. Looking at Miedemar as well, there's just no stopping her. 14 goals in the WSL for her this season. Yeah, she's clinical. Um, like I say, if you give her any any sniff of a chance in and around the 18-yard box, she'll score. You know, she scored against us when they beat us 1-0. And um, whoever they're playing against, I'm sure they back themselves to score with her in the team. So with both Arsenal and Manchester City winning, let's now see how fellow title challengers Chelsea got on away at Liverpool. Of course, Emma Hayes' side came from behind against Manchester City last week with Beth England central to that one. Beth England is turning on the style. Ball up towards England, taken down brilliantly. How about that? And that's fantastic. England for Chelsea. And it's the woman in form, Beth England. Commentary comes from Chris Slegg. Pumped forward again towards the edge of the box, headed away by Millie Bright. And it's been a, a positive start for the home side for Liverpool. Free kick for Liverpool in a dangerous position. Well, bright start, especially given Chelsea's tendency to blow teams away early on. Struck towards, and Berger has to palm it out. Still haven't cleared it. It's going to trickle all the way in. Well, a real scrap in the area. Chelsea just couldn't clear it. And in the end, it rolled in to the back of the net. Lovely one-two with Wright and Anderson will look to get the cross in towards the far post again. In it comes, header, lovely save that. What a stunning save. Well, Francis Kitchen did so well to get down to that and palm it away. Stupendous save. Cuthbert out to Wrighton. Wrighton pings this one in. And England gets on the end of it and heads home her sixth WSL goal of the season. Well, she was never going to miss. The woman in form, right and laid it on the plate for her, and there she was. Mielder can bring it down the right-hand side, knocks across into Beth England, who glances ahead a wide of the post this time. Nice deft ball to Mielder, who will whip the cross in towards the penalty area, and Ingle hits the post. And Liverpool survive. Lynette falls and wins a perhaps fortuitous free kick. Prepares to strike this for Liverpool. Crashes it towards the top of the goal. I nearly said top corner, but it was too central. Cuthbert to wriggle away from the Liverpool defenders and she's brought down, is she? Well, referee says yes, she does indeed. Free kick to Chelsea. In it comes. Mielder strikes it towards the top corner. Oh, did uh, Kitchen get a touch? Did it 
rattle the bar. It looked like it touched something on its way through. Babajide wins it back. Well played, Rinsula Babajide. Gets the shot away, Berger didn't quite grasp it at the first attempt. Are oh, Chelsea going to steal the points late on yet again? Cuthbert hovers over it. So many of her players in that Liverpool area. In it comes towards the far post, headed back down. Scramble, real scramble there. Ingles in there, Bright's in there. And it goes behind to the relief of those red shirts. We stuck to the game plan really well today. Uh, the pitch probably helped us more so for, for them because they wouldn't be able to zip it around as like they would do on a carpet. Um, so that played into our hands. But I think our discipline out of possession was fantastic. This pitch shouldn't be um, a part of our league. I think our league deserves better standards. And I think for Liverpool Football Club, champions of Europe, they should provide their women's team with significantly more than they're doing. And I think the quality of that pitch, the worst in the league, is a stain on their football club. Well, some really powerful words there from Emma Hayes on the pitches in the division. Nick, from your point of view, are some of the pitches a concern? Um, we haven't experienced um, really poor pitches, you know, consistently over the last few seasons. I think, you know, wherever we travel, the pitches have been good. We played on a really wet pitch against Everton at Southport earlier on this season, but there'd been a lot of rain. Um, there's been a lot of rain this week. I live really close to Prenton Park and, and, and through Thursday and Friday there was really heavy downpours. So um, it looked muddy, it looked wet, but um, I watched the second half of the game. Both teams had to play on it. Um, so yeah, it'd be a frustration for Emma, but you know, I don't think it's I don't think we consistently play on bad pitches. Drops points then in that one for Chelsea. They did have plenty of chances to win it. How damaging in terms of a title challenge can dropping points in games like that be for a team? Um, well, I think we've got probably the best experience of that if we, if we reflect on last season. Um, the draws that we had were really damaging for us, uh, pushing Arsenal for, a, for the league title. Uh, you know, while we were fighting for the title, we didn't actually lose a game, but we, we'd drawn five. Um, and that, it just took away our chances to really put them under any pressure at times. So we talk about it a lot this season in and around the games when you're playing Chelsea, Arsenal, Man United, the, te the, the teams that people perceive to be pushing for the title. Um, we talk about making sure we pick up three points for sure. A quick word on Liverpool then, because they got another point, a big point for them today. Are they becoming harder to beat, do you think? Um, they're a difficult side. You know, I, We played them here and we only beat them 1-0 and that was off the back of, of them only getting beat by Arsenal 1-0. And, and you know, the, the performances are improving. And I think Vicky will be really pleased with that result because she'll have been disappointed with the results but really proud and really pleased with performances of late. And I think they were due getting a result because they've been playing well. Yeah, they certainly have been. Now we have one more game to show you. Of course, the weather, meaning that a number of games were postponed today. So there's just one more game and that's between Reading and Spurs. Watching this one was Chris Charples. Well, it's a very good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to Adams Park for the final action of 2019 for Reading and Spurs. James, that's a fine pass. And it'll be cut back for Williams as you'll get a second try and Spencer with the save. Wonderful football from Reading. Thwarted by Becky Spencer. Graham trots over to take this corner now. And it's picked out Siri Vorm, who looks to pick out the corner. Oh, I say, that is wonderful. And it's a piece of inspiration that was needed in this one. And it's come courtesy of Siri Vorm. Played in by Williams towards Spencer. She's lost it. And running a level. It's Joe Potter in the right place. It's a simple finish in the end, and that's two goals in a week for Potter. Rowe gets to keep it low. That's Eicheland. Oh, and the header! Oh, what a save from Spencer! That is an outrageous piece of goalkeeping. Launched forward. That's James's header. Oh, a touchdown and in! Reading lead for the first time. Look at these celebrations. They just never give up.
Davison towards Percival. No grades, and here come Reading, and Eichelin's all on her own, tracking back his queen, but Eichelin, can she make it her moment now? She can! Finally she gets her goal, and Reading seal it up once and for all. At the end of the day, they've got a ga game plan to put into place, and, and over the last three games, they've done that, and that's credit to them. And it just shows when they do that, the performances that they can put in, put in and, and coming away with results now. Obviously, we won against pen penalties against Chelsea and, and three points today. Um, it's, it's a shame we've got a break, really, because we're really building momentum. So, But it'll be a good Christmas break, and hopefully the girls can come back in refreshed and, and ready to go again. So let's take a look at the Barclays WSL table as we wrap for 2019. Liverpool move up to 11th following their one-all draw with Chelsea today, while Reading's late comeback saw them move up a place to sixth. And I imagine Nick's eyes will be firmly on this. This is what the top three looks like. Chelsea lie third, Man City's 5-0 thumping of Brighton sees them second, and at the top of the table at Christmas, it's Arsenal. Well, another late comeback from Reading and Nick. That's something we've become rather used to seeing. Yeah, they're, they're, they fight hard, Reading, and, and even if you you know a goal up, you know the game isn't done. Um, they're they're really strong at set pieces, and you can see uh, from the first two goals, first one a corner, um, and the second one a ball into the box. Their delivery into the box is very very good, whether it's Farrow Williams or Joe Potter. And then you know I think Tottenham will be disappointed after being one nil up, and you can see pushing really hard to try and get back into the game and Reading catch them on the counter-attack. And I think, you know, once the game goes to 3-1 away at Reading, you know it's going to be really difficult to try and get something out of the game. Yeah, that was the final game we're bringing you then from the Barclays at WSL. But there were three games as well in the Championship earlier today. And we're going to bring you one of the goals from one of the standout performers. Beth Heppel scored a hat-trick for Durham in their 4-1 win over Crystal Palace. That is a huge result for Durham. It moves them up to third in the Championship table. While that was a bad result for Palace because that sees them slip down to seventh. Now, of course, Nick, this is the final game of 2019. Christmas is just around the corner you haven't got a game for a few weeks what are you planning to do with the squad are they getting a bit of time off uh yeah i think it's important that they get time off i think it's important that they go and spend christmas with their families and their friends and um switch off from football for, for a period of time but um once christmas is done we'll have them back in we've got a really difficult game away at tottenham on the fifth um and we need to make sure we're ready for that i've said already you know we need to make sure we keep picking up three points so that we can win championships well, there is plenty more football to come this week on the BBC. Don't forget, it's the Club World Cup semi-final featuring Liverpool on Wednesday at 5.15pm on BBC Two. Before that, it's the Club World Cup fifth place payoff on the BBC iPlayer Tuesday at 2.15pm. And there is live commentary from Crystal Palace as they take on Brighton on BBC Radio 5 Live tomorrow at 8pm. Well, that's all we've got time for here at the Academy Stadium. My thanks go to Nick Cushing. Been a very long day for him here. Thank you for watching. That is the final women's football show of 2019. What a weekend it has been. We'll see you back here again in the new year. And it will be 5-0. Beat them up. They just never give up.